Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be looking at a nice little in-game position where both sides have the same colored bishop, the light square bishop in this particular game, and one side has a pawn looking to push it to the eighth rank. You cannot checkmate your opponent with only a bishop, so it is important that white pushes the pawn up to this eighth rank. And on black side of the board, knowing that he can't win, his only goal is to try to keep his opponent from promoting this pawn. So he's going to make sure that his bishop is stopping this entire diagonal right here. So that's kind of the game we have going on. It is white's move. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at a few positions on how white can successfully push this pawn up the board. One thing you'll notice is if the bishop, the light square bishop, can come up here to b7, that would be extremely beneficial. It would stop the attack that this light square bishop here on f3 has. Uh, they can't have an exchange because then the king could just take here on b7. Uh, and so white's going to be looking to bring his bishop here to d3 uh, and then come over here to a6 and then eventually here to b7. I do recognize that the light square bishop could come up here to f5 and then c8 and b7. But we're, we're going to be looking at the line if he comes here to d3. Uh, and then you'll see this play out in some other scenarios that we're going to look at. So the first one is going to be this pawn or this bishop here. Here to d3 and this is blocking off the king coming over to b5 uh, trying to stop this uh, and there's not a lot that the light square bishop here on f3 can do to stop this he's just going to come to d5 uh, allowing our bishop to come up here to a6 uh, and the next move is going to be b7 here uh, at no point can this bishop really move away because if it comes off this long diagonal, then all of a sudden it's very easy game for white. White pushes forward with pawn to b7, uh, and then this light square bishop can no longer attack that. So this bishop's kind of forced to just come back here to f3 or some other square on this diagonal to try to hold on to this, uh, and then bishop to b7. Now it's not quite as easy as exchanging off because this bishop's never going to exchange off the board, but he could come here to e2, uh, saying as soon as you move, I'm going to essentially take your place on board. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, we can now bring our bishop down here to g2, and he's going to try to take our place up here to a6, but here's the decisive move. It's bishop to f1. It says you can't come to b7 because the king could just take it right here. Uh, and so you're going to essentially have to take my bishop right here. And then I'm going to push up and you can no longer stop me. And then I'm going to promote my queen up here to b8. Uh, now I do recognize that the bishop could come up here to c8. Uh, if your opponent does play this, uh, just keep in mind you need to play an in-between move. It's going to be very bad if you take this bishop right away because then you'll just lose your pawn and that defeats the entire purpose. Uh, but if you just play bishop to e2, kind of a waiting move, uh, now your opponent is forced to make a bad move. Uh, he has to stop uh, this pawn pushing forward. He can't come here to b7 because now your king takes and still protecting the pawn right here. Can't really come down here to uh, a6 because then the bishop's just going to take here on a6. Uh, so all in all, he's going to be looking to play something around uh, bishop to h3, uh, but then the pawn just pushes forward. So uh, really his best move, although it's not really a great move, is to go ahead and take here on f1, and then the pawn's going to push forward. Pawn here to b7, doesn't matter where the bishop goes now. Let's say bishop to g2, pawn pushes up here to uh, b8, and we'll go ahead and get a queen on board. And this is a pretty easy end game. Uh, if you're not super familiar with it, uh, just make sure your king and queen never get on a light square. This light square bishop is now completely useless on board. Should be a very, very easy game. So that's kind of the, the basic setup if we were to look at it in this position. It's not always this easy. So we are going to look at a few other examples. And by the end of it, we're going to look at maybe the most complex example, but I think it will make a lot more sense uh, as we kind of start from this position. This next position we're going to be looking at is a little bit trickier, uh, but does follow the same logic that we've talked about. And I do like following the same line of thinking because there's a lots of ways that you can actually checkmate your opponent, get your pawn to this eighth rank right here. Uh, but I think if you follow the same structure in all of your in games, it's much easier to remember one train of thought than trying to 
just come up with lots of different variations. So if you remember from the first position, the king was up here on f7. So we're going to try to be getting our king up here to uh, f7. Now we have a couple moves with the bishop. We really want this bishop on g7 to no longer be on this long diagonal right here. That's kind of the key so that we can bring our king up here to f6 and then f7. So we have a couple ways to try to do this. Uh, the best move is really bishop here to g5. Now if we started with something like bishop to f6, tried to force the bishop. The bishop's not going to take, more than likely. We're going to see king up here to h6, uh, and then bishop to g5, forcing the king back to h5. Doesn't really have any other option. And then let's say bishop to e7. So we're kind of at the same position, except now it's black's move. Okay, so if it's black's move, he may play king up here to h6, trying to be aggressive as possible. Uh, bishop to f6, forcing the bishop to move. A little bit different position. Uh, bishop to f8, uh, and then bishop down here, c3. We have to make way for our king to come up the board here. But then bishop back here, g7. We haven't really changed too much. We can't take the bishop on f7, because then the king will just recapture. Okay, so let's try something different. Bishop down here to d2, uh, and then king h5, and then bishop up here here g5 now as you can see if we come back to the very beginning all we had to do was just play bishop to g5 but i do like to kind of talk about you know why would you not play uh, f6 i think it gets us to the same point uh, but just go ahead and play you know bishop here to g5 first now there's there's two things uh that black can do here uh you know we that the king can't move. He just doesn't have any legal moves. Uh, and so really, we're going to be looking at bishop up here to h8, uh, and then bishop here to f8. If he tries to come uh, you know, anywhere else, let's say bishop to d4, uh, all of those are going to lose to bishop on f6. This kind of blocks the threat, makes it easy for us to push up the board with pawn to g7. Um, so that's definitely going to be bad. He has the option, bishop here to h8, definitely the, the worst of the options, simply because now bishop to f6 loses the game for black. He can't come to g7, because then we'll just take the bishop right here. Uh, and then if he were to take our bishop, then we're going to take back with our king. So the only real option that he has is to bring his bishop to f8. And so this is where we're going to start pushing up our king. This is what we talked about. We want to get our king here to f7 because that's what we're used to seeing. We could see king here to uh, g4. We could see lots of variations. It's not going to stop the fact that our king's going to be coming up here to uh, f7. But uh, this does add a little bit of pressure on us. We need to make sure that our bishop here on g5 is safe. Uh, so we can't play uh, king up here to f7 first. We're going to play uh, bishop down here to e3. Uh, and then just see, uh, you know, where our opponent goes. It, it's it's going to be pretty bad if he plays king to f3, tries to chase us, because uh, then just king up here to f7. Uh, we're going to be pushing our pawn to g7, uh, and then, you know, we're going to promote right here. Uh, there's no way to really stop that on board. He can't play bishop g7. We take he can't play bishop here to h6, because then we'll just take it with our bishop right here. Uh, so that's going to be a bad way to go about it. Uh, his other option would let's say, uh, bishop to b4. Uh, so if we come back that one square, if he plays a uh, bishop to b4, uh, then we play king to f7. There are some other ways you can attack this, but the king to f7 is the same position that we're used to seeing. So this allows us to continue our same approach. Uh, bishop to c3, uh, he needs to stop this long diagonal so that the pawn can't push forward with g7. Uh, so now we can continue what we're doing. We're trying to uh, get our bishop here to h6 and then up here to g7. So let's do that. We play bishop to h6 uh, and then he plays king to f5. He could have uh, doodled around with his dark square bishop, but it wouldn't have really done anything. He still needs to stay on this long diagonal. And then we play bishop to g7, uh, forcing the bishop to move. He can't take our bishop because then if we recapture that's going to be an easy win for us. So he's kind of forced to come over here to D2. It says, as soon as you move, uh, I'm going to take your place on board. And that's exactly what we saw in the first position. So bishop down here to B2. 
And then bishop h6, and then we have that in-between move that forces him to essentially take our bishop, and then we can go ahead and push forward. So after bishop takes on c1, then we push forward with pawn to g7, and then the next move is going to be promoting here to g8. So a uh, nice little tactic to make sure that we can get our king to the position we want, and then push our pawn up and promote on the 8th rank. The last position we're going to be looking at is the most complex thing, Torini in game but i think the other positions we've looked at will help us better understand how to approach this and if you were looking on wikipedia uh, this is the position specifically in 1856 that centurini actually published and he kind of went through how you can win as white by the end of this hopefully everyone is kind of a master now the the dark square bishop here for white is in kind of a trickier place than before you know, earlier we had the bishop over here. We could easily just come to a7. There was no way to really block that. From here, it's going to take a few moves. We can't come here to just b6 because the king would take that right away. Okay, we're going to have to kind of come around and let's say bishop to h4, then over here to f2, and then up here to a7. That's kind of the intended plan. Uh, but black is able to, to stop that because after bishop down here to h4, uh, then king to b6. You can see him starting to stop the attack. Okay, bishop to f2, and then king to a6. This stops it right here. Now, white does have a really good move on board. If you haven't seen this position, I could re recommend that you pause and see if you could find white's best move in this position. So hopefully you've taken some time if uh, you wanted to see if you could find the best move. But the best move is bishop to c5. Uh, and if you were to try something else, let's say bishop to d4. Uh, the goal with c5, and we kind of look at it, and we'll kind of come back to, to d4. But the goal is bishop to e7, uh, and then d8, and then d7. Really blocking off uh, the dark square bishop for black's opportunity to stop the pawn pushing forward to b8. So if we do come back and say, uh, let's say bishop to d4. Uh, okay, bishop to d6 really stops. If you are playing as black, uh, keep in mind this is what you should be looking out for. You're going to try to be coming here to d6. Now, if white were to try bishop to f6, getting ready to come up here to d8. Okay, king to b6, uh, bishop to d8, and then king to c6. Uh, and then where does white come he, he really can't do anything uh bishop to e7 if he tries to kind of stop his uh, opponents or get him off this long diagonal okay it's pretty easy you could just bring his bishop back here to h2 he's not forced to take this bishop right here uh and the bishop would really like to come down here to c5 and then up here to a7 but as you can see he can't come down here the king's going to take and so he's going to have to make another attempt to swing around the board so all in all, that's not the best way to go about it. Instead, he needs to play bishop here to c5. And we'll kind of look at why this is so much better. Uh, because now let's say bishop to f4. I'm trying to stop it. Okay, uh, bishop to e7. This is what we talked about. Looking to come up here to d8 and then c7. Uh, king to b6. We looked at this before. Uh, bishop up here to d8. King to c6. But here is the main difference on board. And that is bishop to g5. And it doesn't matter where your opponent is. He could be here on g3. Um, you know, he could be here on e5. Either way, you're going to bring your bishop next to them and kind of force them to do something. Now, they, they can't just take right here because then you're going to promote here on b8. So we know that's not going to be the way they're going to go about it. But instead, you essentially are gaining a tempo here because let's say they come back to g3. Okay, perfect. Now you can come down here to B to E3, and now they can't stop you. Before, the king had that extra move to come over here to B6, but he can no longer stop you and do that. And so then we continue our normal game plan. We're going to be looking to come up here to A7. Uh, so how do they stop it? They really can't. So let's come up here to uh, D6. Okay, that's a possibility they have. Uh, bishop here to A7 says, okay, uh, can't really do uh, too much about that. Let's come back here to uh, g3. Uh, and then we see bishop up here, b8. They can't take that right here, so they're going to come to f2. Uh, and then we have uh, the bishop down here to h2. And this is all from the various 
situations we've been looking at, forcing your opponent to kind of come up here to a7, uh, and then we have the last move that kind of brings it all together, and that is the bishop down here to g1, saying you want to replace this on b8, you can't, because then our king would just take you right here. We're forcing you, kind of a nice deflection, to come back, take the bishop right here, or we're going to take you on a7. And then after they take, then you can come up here to b8 and promote to the queen. So as we come back, you can see really nice way uh, as we want to bring our bishop over here to a7 uh, to kind of move around the board to eventually force their bishop to waste a move so that we can bring our bishop over here to a7 and their king does not have time to stop us. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, this definitely doesn't come up all too often, uh, but it's always good to know, especially if you have the pawn and the bishop, how to go about getting the win. And if you're playing on the opposite side, uh, how to kind of stop your opponent from doing this. Do keep in mind, this only works if the bishops are on the same colored square. If one side is on a light color, the other side's on the dark color, uh, there's no way that they can kind of interact. So you can't force them to, uh, to go anywhere because they just never touch. Uh, and it is also important that the pawn uh, is not below kind of this fifth rank here. You're not gonna be able to push this up the entire board. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you'd like to practice this in game, I will have a link in the description below if you're on YouTube. That'll take you to the website. There's multiple positions that you may want to practice. And this goes for all the in games that I have on the website. There are practice boards that you can actually go in and try this out for yourself. Make sure that you have mastered this. There's a lot of chess in games that you need to know. This is just one of them, but feel free. Check that link below, go to the website and see if you have mastered that. If you have, feel free to leave me a comment below. Let me know that you have done that. If there's other videos you'd like me to make on in-game tactics, feel free to let me know that as well. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.